I'm Andrea Jacques, and I'm the founder of Kiyose Consulting. I've actually been surprised at the variety of people that are reading and enjoying the book. I expected that I would hear from a lot of women of various different ages, 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s, who are really enjoying it. But what has most surprised me is the men I've been hearing from, uh, men who are in their early 20s and men who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s, who have reached out to me and said how much they have enjoyed reading the book. Well, I actually didn't decide to do an audio book. My husband and business partner, Boyan Blocka, who is here with me on this microphone, um, decided that we should do an audio book. And we had actually gone to visit his parents who lived on a golf course. And so he decided that, that was going to be a quiet place that we would be able to record my audio book. And uh, unbeknownst to me, he had a closet in mind. <laughs> and that's where we recorded this audiobook in a closet together for how many days? Two days. Two days. <laughs> a very hot closet in August. Well, full disclosure, I really can't read kanji to save my life. Uh, however, I think they're actually incredibly beautiful. And I love the fact that Sometimes when we look at something like kanji, it's like a picture and it makes us look at things in different ways. And so each of the kanji that I chose can be translated roughly into an English word, but I created my own definitions of what that would be. So I might have chosen the kanji for beauty, but I gave my own definition of what beauty is. Um, and so, yes, they're not, the definitions that I give under each of the kanji are not literal translations. They're uh, more just quotes of what I think of when I am encountering each of those concepts. I studied Japanese tea ceremony when I was in Japan for a while, and I, and I fell in love with the meditative quality of it. And in particular, I really fell in love with the beauty of the bowls and the utensils that are used in Japanese tea ceremony, because they are all very different and unique and imperfect in a way. And so the title Wabi Sabi Wisdom was more of an exercise for me in coming to terms with my own imperfection as a writer and really challenging myself to put myself out there in the world with all of my imperfections and just take a chance. Wabi Sabi Wisdom isn't a book about Wabi Sabi so much as it was an exercise in embracing my own Wabi Sabiness, my imperfection and, uh, you know, we all as human beings have this sense of our own imperfection. And, uh, especially when it comes to creating and putting our work out in the world and being who we are and pursuing our dreams, we very often stop ourselves from doing that by waiting for us to be perfect, for ourselves to be perfect. And for me, writing Wabi Sabi Wisdom was really a challenge that I set for myself to just be okay with who I am now, who I was in the moment that I wrote that book and put whatever wisdom I have out there and let the world decide what they can get from it rather than agonizing and perfectionizing and waiting until I thought it was perfect. Wabi Sabi Wisdom is a collection of stories. It is an imperfect tea bowl in itself. It's beautiful in its imperfection. It's a random collection of stories that I crafted over the years from articles that I had written and picked out ones that really resonated with me that I found beautiful. And so it's wabi-sabi in that it's like a tea bowl that you can have a little sip of wisdom and take from it what you will. It's not my wisdom. It's the wisdom that when you sip it, you bring your own wisdom. We're all wabi-sabi. That's what I hope people will get from it, is a sip of their own wisdom. It's probably more like sipping a cup of tea. You're not going to guzzle the whole thing. You're not going to have 10 cups of tea at once, or you're not going to, you might guzzle your whole cup of tea at once. But really, this book is like a bunch of cups of tea with a friend. 
And so you kind of read or listen to, in this case, it, it, with the audiobook, you listen to one chapter at a time, you just savor it. And then you get on with your day. <laughs> and then another day, you have another cup of tea with a friend. And you savor that. And then you get on with your day. I think just consume it like a nice, relaxing, thought-provoking cup of tea.